Welcome back to Introduction to Finance. Here I'm going to be showing you how to calculate an annuity future value when the compounding frequency and the payment frequency do not match. So in my previous video, which I can link up above and also in the description box, I did all examples where the compounding frequency and the payment frequency do match. And in that case, we use the periodic rate. In this case, though, you'll see when we draw a timeline that we can no longer use that periodic rate. The steps that we're going to go through for each one of these problems is first, we want to identify the cash flow frequency. Then using that frequency, we want to calculate the rate that incorporates in compounding between each one of the cash flows. So we're always going to make the rate match whatever the cash flow frequency is. Then last up, we want to use the future value equation where R is that rate that we just calculated in step two between the cash flows. Similarly to the last video, the N is still going to be the number of cash flows in the series. If we look at this first example here, we have $500 at the end of each year for five years if the APR is 12% with monthly compounding. Now first, let's just think about what this is going to look like on a timeline. So we're going to have five cash flows total. And I'm not going to have enough room to write in every month, but you can think about a monthly compounding, right? So every single month, the interest is being reinvested and you're earning interest on your interest. Going all the way across. Now we're getting $500 at the end of each year. And we want to figure out the future value, essentially in the time period of the last cash flow, so in year five. First, identifying the cash flow frequency. So the cash flow frequency here is annual, right, or yearly. So what we're going to need to do is we need to calculate the rate that incorporates in compounding each year. Now to complete this step two, I'm going to redraw my timeline again, but I'm just going to focus in on one year. So within one year, we're going to get the $500 at the end. And it says our APR is 12% with monthly compounding. So my yearly rate is not 12%. That is not what I want to plug in as my R. The reason for that is that 12% is an APR, right? So the APR does not include compounding. And this one has a compounding frequency that's faster than annual. So we're going to earn actually more than 12% per year once we include compounding. Now, how do we figure out how much we're going to earn per year is we can start with the periodic rate. So the periodic rate, if you watched the previous video, you've seen it before, it's where we take the APR and we divide it by the number of compounds per year. So in this case, our periodic rate is going to end up being the monthly rate, right, because we have monthly compounding. And every month we would earn 12 divided by 12 compounds per year. So our monthly rate is 1%. Now thinking about that on my timeline, every single month, my money is being reinvested at a 1% rate, right? Going all the way across until you get to 12 months here. So thinking about what my annual rate is, or my rate between cash flows, I end up with, I want to take that monthly rate, I'm going to put it in decimal form, and I'm going to compound it however many compounds I have between payments. So in this case, 12. Subtract off 1. And I end up with an annual rate of above 12% or 12.68%, just about. So this rate that we just solved for, this is the rate including compounding.
So if I wanted to write one equation that summarized what that R value is, my R is my rate between cash flows. And the way I can calculate it is I'm going to do 1 plus my APR divided by the number of compounds per year and then my exponent is going to be the number of compounds between payments. Minus 1. Now you may notice that this rate between cash flows equation looks similar to something you've seen before. So what it looks similar to is something like an effective annual rate, which is often abbreviated EFF or EAY. Now the trick with EFF or EAY is they're always annual rates, right? So the way you're calculating it is you're doing one plus the APR divided by the number of compounds per year, and your exponent is always gonna be number of compounds per year. So whatever your answer is, is it's always going to be your rate yearly. Now that actually ended up being exactly what we were calculating for this example problem, right? We were taking a monthly rate and compounding it for 12 months in one year. So this rate that we solved for, the 12.68%, is an annual rate that includes compounding. Now where you can no longer use this is you cannot use this if the cash flows are not annual. That's why I write up here this top version, which is the one I would recommend using for these specific types of problems, because this top equation can be generalized to any cash flow frequency that you have. Your cash flows could be quarterly, semi-annually, annually, whatever it may be. That top equation will work for them all. Now last up, we're actually gonna solve the problem so we need the future value of an annuity is equal to our cash flow. So the cash flow was $500. We have one plus our rate between cash flows. So that's the number we saw for above. We want to keep it in decimal form. The number of cash flows is five annual cash flows minus one divided by that rate again. And we end up with an answer of 3219.777. There's more decimal places beyond that. It honestly depends how many decimal places you round this rate to, what your answer will end up rounding to. If I round it to the nearest sense, it should be 3219 and 78 cents. Now let's look at another one. So in this problem, we have $800 every six months for three years, and the APR is 6% with monthly compounding. Now first let me draw out a timeline, and thinking about my timeline, I have three years. My cash flow happens every six months. I want to find the future value, and my APR is 6% with monthly compounding. So first thing I want to start with is cash flow frequency. So my cash flow frequency is essentially semi-annual, right, or every six months. Now next up, I need to calculate the rate incorporating compounding between cash flows. So my rate, I need it to be a semi-annual rate. Now I cannot just take the 6% and divide it by 2 and end up with a semi-annual rate. The reason for that is because this rate is compounded monthly. So I need to incorporate in the fact that it is compounded monthly. If I zoom in on one of these periods, cash flow periods and just think about over six months, 
before that first $800 is paid. It's 6% with monthly compounding. So every month I'm earning 0.06 over 12, right? That 0 0.06 over 12 is my periodic rate, which is monthly. Now, how many times is that periodic rate going to be compounded in between cash flows? It's going to be compounded a total of six times because I have six months in the cash flow period. So if I write out my equation here, I'm going to have one plus my APR, 0.06, divided by the number of compounds per year, 12. And then my exponent is my number of compounds in between cash flows or in between payments. That would be six minus one. So instead of being an effective annual rate, I would think of this one as an effective semi-annual rate. Not annual. When I solve this out, I end up with 0 0.030378. And now I can use this rate, right? I know my cash flow already, and I know the number of times my cash flow occurs within that future value equation. I end up with the future value of this annuity is equal to 800. Then in brackets, I'm going to have 1 plus that effective rate I just calculated, number of cash flows is 6 minus 1 divided by 0 0.030378. My final answer ends up being 517964. And again, your final answer could differ slightly depending on how many decimal places you kept, especially in the R portion.